All machine code instructions usually consist of an operation code and an operand. And they have two distinct parts as shown here. We can see we have the operation code part and we have the operand part. Now the operation code is often referred to as simply the opcode. Now in addition to it having two possible parts, we have situations where some instructions just consist of an operation code, which we can abbreviate again to simply opcode. And it looks as follows here simply operation code. It has no operand part. Now we'll come back to what that means a little bit later. But what we can be quite sure of is this, that all of the operation codes and all operands are binary codes. Everything about a machine code instruction is binary. It's the binary that controls the computer hardware. A machine code program consists of a sequence of opcodes operation codes in other words, and operands stored in the computer's memory, for example stored in random access memory, e.g. RAM. Now if we have a look at what's stored in RAM it will look something like this. We can see here we have instruction 1 and if we look closely we can see that has an operation code immediately followed by an operand. Then we can see instruction 2, it too has an operation code followed by an operand Likewise, instruction 3, an operation code followed by an operand. Whereas if we look at instruction 4, we can see that that just has an operation code. This one doesn't have the operand stored in the computer's memory. Now these are typical examples of instructions. And we can see that they're stored over consecutive memory locations. Instruction 1, for example, has taken up two locations. Likewise, instruction 2 and 3. Whereas instruction 4 has only took up one memory location. If we now consider an individual machine code instruction, it's shown here, and in fact this is an example of an assembly language instruction, where the LD stands for load, A stands for register A, which is inside the central processing unit, and 01 stands for the number that's going to be loaded into register A. Now the H simply means hexadecimal, it's not actually part of the number. But what we have here, we have a language which is useful for human beings. It's quite easy to remember that that is load A with a number. In this case, the number is 01. However, the computer doesn't understand that. It doesn't understand that directly. It has to be converted into the language of the machine, which are binary codes. So we have a computer program that will convert this for us, and it's called an assembler. So what we have to do, we have to assemble this and we assemble it to its machine code and its machine code will actually look like this this is the opcode for load A with a number now that pattern will always represent the same instruction now the operand in this case is 01 and that's the operand and if you have a look at that that's a byte and you can see that that represents binary 1 now the thing is binary is a pain to remember so what we do as machine code programmers, we memorize long binary patterns using hexadecimal. So if I convert this binary into hex, and if you don't know how to do that, have a look elsewhere on this channel and you'll see it shows you how to convert binary to hexadecimal. And this is what it looks like in hexadecimal. We can see that the opcode is now 3E and the operand is in fact 01. Now, what in fact happens is that these are put into random access memory, as you can see appearing here. We have 3E followed by 01. And the RAM, well that stands for random access memory. Now memory locations are as follows. I'm making the assumption that we start off at that location there, 0, 0, 0, 0, followed by the H. Now the H just stands for hexadecimal. Now the next memory location is obviously going to be one bigger than that which I simply show there. So we can see that the opcode is followed by the operand and this instruction load A with 01 takes two consecutive memory locations. So in fact we can see that this assembly language instruction will ultimately be placed in the computer memory as binary patterns. But I'm representing those binary patterns here by hexadecimal numbers. 
So don't think it's hex that gets stored. It's actually binary. It's just that hex is a better way for us to remember long binary patterns. So we can see that that gets stored in the random access memory here. The 3E in memory location 0, 0, 0, 0, or 1 in memory location 0, 0, 0, 1. And of course we can see that's the opcode and we can see that that is in fact the operand. Now this kind of instruction here is an example of immediate addressing. As the data to be manipulated by this instruction comes immediately after the opcode. And when I say manipulated, in this particular case, it simply means transferring the O1 from the random access memory into register A, which resides inside the central processing unit. So this is an example of an instruction that moves things. But the name immediate addressing comes from the fact that the operand, in this case the O1, comes immediately after the opcode. Now what we can see here is the central processing unit. And I'm just showing that in the center of the central processing unit we have register A. Now there's obviously a lot more things in the central processing unit, but here I'm only interested in register A. And we can see that stored within it is 00. zero. Now that's hexadecimal. In fact, that would represent eight zeros, a byte, because register A is capable of holding a byte. But we're just doing this in hex because it's easier to remember hex numbers than binary numbers. So what we're looking at here is before, before the execution of the following instruction which is shown here load a with 07 the h remember stands for hexadecimal now we've just been looking at this already but in fact we weren't loading a with 7 in the previous example we were loading it with 1 but here i've just changed it slightly we're loading a with 7 now in fact what will happen when this executes is this we will see that after register a will have 7 in it in other words the 7 gets transferred into register A. And of course, that 7 would have come from the memory location in RAM. And the 7 came immediately after the opcode for load A. And the opcode would have been 3E like it was last time. So it would have been 3E07. Let's have a look at another assembly language instruction. And we can see here, INC A. Now, INC is an abbreviation for increment. And what this instruction will do, it'll take whatever's in A and it will make it one bigger. That's what we mean by increment. Now we will need to assemble this into machine code because remember this is an assembly language instruction. It's not in the form that a machine will understand. So an assembler will do this conversion for us. And, and when we convert it, what, this is what we'll get here, we'll get this binary pattern. And this binary pattern is the opcode. Now the first thing to say is this particular instruction, as part of the instruction, doesn't have an operand. We'll come back and talk about that a little bit later. But what we do need to know is this, that this is better represented in hexadecimal. So in fact, this opcode in hexadecimal is in fact a 3C. So 3C is the opcode in machine code for ink A. Of course, when I say machine code, the true machine code is in fact the binary. It's just that 3C is easy to remember and it's easy to convert from 3C to binary. Now, what in fact we now need to do is to get this 3C loaded into the random access memory, which we can see here. And for argument's sake, I'm going to say that we're going to put that in this memory location here, 0000. zero, zero, zero. H, where H stands for hexadecimal. So in fact, those four zeros there are indeed 16 bits, all zero in this case, because we convert that hexadecimal address to a binary address. So once that's actually in memory, this can now become the program that controls the central processing unit. It tells the CP what to do. That's an instruction 3C. So in fact, this particular instruction here will be placed into the random access memory which is highlighted here and we need to realize that in fact this is the opcode 3c for incrementing a now this is an example of implied addressing as it is implied that the data to be manipulated by the instruction is already in place now what that means is it's going to do something to register A. So there must have been something placed there already. Something that's in there, we're simply going to make it one bigger. So this could be used for counting, going around the loop, 
in a particular program. So the data is implied. It's in place, it's in situ, and we're simply going to do something to it. That's why it doesn't have an operand as part of the instruction, as the previous one did. It's implied that the data is already in place somewhere else. And in this case, the somewhere else is inside the central processing unit in register A. So if we have a look at this particular instructions execution, what we can see is here I've got the central processing unit, and in register A we've got 00. zero. Now that 00, zero is hex, remember, so that is actually 8 bits there. And we're looking at what it is before. Now when we increment, we use this instruction here which says increment A, what in fact will happen, it'll take the current contents of register A, which we can see is 00, zero and it alters it. And we can see, if we look at the after, that we have got 0, 1. In other words, this is 1 bigger. In other words, increment A has taken what was in register A and made it 1 bigger by simply adding 1 to it. Now, that would have taken place inside the central processing unit using the arithmetic and logic unit. But we'll come on to discuss those types of things a little later. <laughs>